So your task is to find the spaghetti. Uh, the other observation is that if I know one point on spaghetti any place, I know past and future because I have my integrator. So it suffices to know one point per spaghetto, to be correct, Italian. And uh, that's what we now want to do. We want to learn how to do this. And this was the very deep insight of Poincaré. He realized that when you look at the spaghetti, there is an uninteresting part, which is easy to control, which is what happens along the spaghetti. But what you really care about is what happens to your neighbors, because you would like to know whether your neighbors stay as you go someplace, you know, what, what, what is the thing. And for that, you really need a transverse section. I'll only call it section, but, you know, I mean Poincaré section. So what is a Poincaré section? In our space M, curly M for the manifold on which all possible states of the system live, I design a hypersurface which I'll call curly P for Poincaré. And now this space is d-dimensional and uh, the hypersurface will be d minus one dimensional. And the horrible truth about Poincaré section is that nobody tells you how to choose a Poincaré section. There is no rule. You're kind of accepted already that you're writing equations in coordinates. Coordinates are arbitrary. But by the time you get to Poincaré sections, you realize that the way we work is that we put these things on computers, we start it, et cetera, and for us it's totally necessary to construct some kind of coordinates to do this in even though the mathematics of itself doesn't care. Mathematics says that uh, M is a union of all orbits. It's something that's put together from infinite maybe zero dimensional and one dimensional things. Spaghetti. And they're happy. They're done. They can go home and sleep because they've shown that it's a ball of spaghetti. But if you're trying to predict consequences of our equations, we have to construct coordinates to do it. So the idea that Poincaré had this solar system sitting here. Newton says he does that. And he wanted to know what happens to the neighbors. So he didn't really care about what happens in this direction because things evolve in kind of a rather simple way. He said, I need a transverse. Transverse to the trajectory x of E, see, trajectory has a tangent vector called velocity because our equations are of this form. As long as this section cuts my spaghetti across and not along it, I'm okay. So then I can look at neighboring trajectories and see what happens to them. Where are they? So that was Poincaré's idea. It seems very simple because the trajectory is one dimensional curve and the intersection with Poincaré's section is point. So you can really visualize this stuff. However, this is in 100,000 dimensions and this is in 99,000 dimensions. So you have to understand Poincaré's section is not a plane. I, I keep drawing it as a plane because I can't do anything better. But it's 
an object whose core dimension is one, so it's just slightly smaller than the original state space. So it doesn't seem like you're gaining very much. You're in 100,000 dimensions, you'll be one dimension down. Turns out it's very intelligent dimension you're taking. And what Poincaré section really does, it's a change of coordinates. Local change of coordinates. Originally you had your uh, Georgia Tech coordinates. The, you know, some wise architect has designed this room and you're measuring distances from the corner of that room. The action is very far away. And uh, what Poincaré's action says that I like this point, it's very important to me. I'll even sometimes give it a name, I'll call it template. This is a state of the system I really care about. For example, some vortex of a fluid or something. And then Poincaré's section will be implanted, and now what I'm doing really is I'm changing my coordinates. If I blow this up, I'm changing my coordinates to transverse ones, so there is a x1 transverse, x2 transverse, and so on to 100,000. And then one longitudinal coordinate, x parallel to the spaghetti. So I don't lose any information, I've just locally changed my coordinates. Uh, I can always reconstruct the whole trajectory, I can go back and forth. It's not a reduction of dimensionality, etc. It's just uh, an intelligent choice of coordinate system that is focused on the dynamics you care about. And now what happens is, from this whole spaghetti, I just get a bunch of points in this hypersurface. And each one of them is a unique label for its future and past. So that's a Poincaré section, and in practice, you try to do simple things. So the example is, you say, well, you know, I'm at a point x prime, and uh, I would like to define a plane of points centered on x prime, which are orthogonal to, let's say, velocity is x prime. So this defines, this is, uh, you know, hyperplane section. In other words, there's a point I think is very important because lots of stuff happens there. I picked that point. That point has a vector field associated with it because velocity, how am I going to evolve in time, is uh, always given. So I say, uh huh, let me choose that direction. And now let me look at hyperplane which is orthogonal to it. That seems like the wisest choice, because in this way the neighbors are most spread out, you know, if I was cutting at some other slice. So that's how you do it in practice, a simple, simple example. Now, a more uh, correct definition is to say the way I get to this co-dimension one space is to put one condition. So I will accept points on each spaghetti only if x something is zero. This was the simplest example. So that gives me one condition. So the space that remains is one dimension less than the original space. It's called dimension one. That defines points in Poincaré section. So that's a good start. You practice by choosing some sensible hypersurfaces. Planes are simplest, but sometimes you might find that the circle is what you want to do, or some ball because you want to exit, or depending on your problem. So you'll have to 
So this function is something that you construct. And uh, we now have to make sure that our spaghetti actually pierces this thing. It's transverse. When is it not transverse? Not transverse. If I look at the function u, evaluate it at Poincaré section point, so at this point, and I look at some other thing here, which is at x plus delta x. And this is in the hyperplane, if it satisfies the condition for Poincaré section. Now, if this is small, I can write this as a Taylor series. This is a d-dimensional vector, so I write that. And you know, I'll be lazy instead of writing lots of sum often when, when the index is repeated, that implies that this is sum over of u evaluated at that point equals zero up to linear order. But this is zero by definition. I, point is inside uh, the Poincaré section if it satisfies that du, the xi, the gradient of my condition, u. I'm using curly either for sets or for operators, but we haven't gotten to any operators yet. Thanks for pointing out. So, now, you actually know from other situations what this gradient is. You know that this defines the normal to the surface. So if at point x prime I look at the normal vector, half usually means it's a unit normal vector, they'll be proportional to the gradient. So I am not transverse if I satisfy this condition. I'm on trajectory. So if I started at x uh, at time 0 and went short time out, so I moved just a little bit. That's a point on the trajectory. But I have the equation of motion, x dot equals v, so the short length is just a linear integration in linear order. So this is delta t times velocity evaluated. So if I'm on trajectory, this will become a condition saying that velocity evaluated at that point in the cross-section times the gradient of my condition that de defines the orbit, zero. And that clearly makes sense because the gradient is proportion orthogonal to the surface, normal to the surface. Velocity vector is something that's tangent to my trajectory because that's how I get it by integrating it. And if they're at 90 degrees, I will be in the surface. So condition for being not transverse is I am at a point on Poincaré section. I just look at my law of nature. You know, what is my derivative in time? That vector field is given to me. That's how I started the whole story. At that point, I multiply it, dot it with the gradient of my condition, evaluate it at that point. And that must not be zero. So that's one condition on the Poincaré section. Another condition is, comes from the notion of neighborhood. So I am in the Poincaré section. And I find that my velocity field v at x prime 
is pointing this way. Then I look to the left, and there is somebody going this way, but in my general direction. I look to the right, somebody is going this way, in my general direction. I call them my neighbors because they're, you know, grooving in the same way that I do, have the same groove. And I keep looking further out until I discover, because remember, this is nonlinear flow spaghetti going whichever way I discover, there is one spaghetto here in which I have exact transversality. Because what has happened, this condition made Poincaré section co-dimension one. Now we have a second condition, which makes, that defines the border. So there is a set as the point, let's call it star, is in the border S, which is 100,000 dimensionals minus 2, if x star is in a Poincaré section and it's not transverse to it. So that means that once you get here, your Poincaré section has failed because it doesn't define a transverse cut. And on the other side, they're most likely going some other way. So these are not people like you. So it should be oriented. So it should be transverse and oriented. And by oriented, I mean that the dot product is the same sign for everybody in the neighborhood. I'll take it to be positive meaning that not only that's transverse, which means it's not equal to zero, but I want it to be V of X times the orientation of my section should be strictly positive. And now you start getting some feeling that uh, it's not easy to construct Poincaré section because you have to some, have, have some geometrical intuition what's a good hypersurface to pick and where to pick it and why to pick it there. But it's almost always going to be local. It'll be very rare that you'll be able to write one function that cuts all the spaghetti.